And there's a bee. There's a freaking bee trying to land on me. Get the fuck off him. Get off him. Get off of me, man. It's too early for this. Get away. Get away. I'm not getting stung. No, 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 no. So, yep, they are plum crazy. We'll talk about why, but check it out. There's my Hellcat sign. And there is my Super Bee sign. How perfect is that for today's announcement of the new Scat Pack Plum Crazy Super Bee, also in B5 Blue. Let's jump into my office, which is my 2022 Dodge Charger, and talk about this while I also share a few of my thoughts on these commenters and the ridiculous electric vehicle argument that we keep trying to hash out here. Let's listen to this beauty. Whew. I love that, never get tired of that. All right, so Dodge announced the 2023 Super B, and I'm gonna break it down like I always do with absolute honesty and transparency. And today, at least for part of this video, I'm gonna be extremely positive and just say that I love the car. I love the wide body. I love that it's coming out in plum crazy. I love that it's coming out in the narrow body in B5 blue. I think it's beautiful I think it's awesome and just so you all know it's gonna be a charger and that's cool too I love both equally I like literally have to toss a coin up only reason I choose the charger in the past or chose it in this car was I have a teenager and I'm hauling her and her friends around and it's just way easier to get in and out of this thing than wrestle with the doors that's all I love both the cars equally and frankly after my Hellcat maybe I'll end up with a a challenger when Dodge realizes they completely screwed up by getting rid of these these cars and bring them back in 2024. <laughs> I'm dreaming. I know I'm dreaming, but why can't just let me have my dream for a minute here? But let's talk about the Super B. So basically, again, they're rolling out a stickered up Dodge Charger and they're bringing it out in the new colors. And no, you're not going to be able to order this car. That car is going to be at select dealerships. You're going to have to go hunt down. So that's my issue, and that means. I believe it's going to be marked up wildly, which is why I am today wearing Racer X shirt because we need your help. And I'm going to share that with you in a second as something we're working on to try to at least counter or at least get our voices heard on these stupid markups. But let's talk about the Super B. So it's modeled after the 2012 SRT8 Super B, which was an awesome car and it was about 470 horsepower. And they're saying this will be the most powerful Super B they've ever made. But let's be clear, a lot of people out there already, within minutes of this announcement, hoping, praying that this Super B will have a beefed up 392, a tuned 392, a built 392. They're gonna, they're, they're hoping this thing's going to be something more what than what I believe it's gonna be. Common sense tells me that what they mean by being the most powerful Super B they've ever made is this new Super B will be a Scat Pack, and a Scat Pack, as we all know, is 485 horsepower. So if the original 2012 Super B was 470 horsepower, and this is 485 horsepower, that makes this Super B the most powerful Super B they've ever made. And they're gonna make it available with drag radials on it, which is, which is cool if you're into that kind of thing. And maybe I'll be. Um, would I buy this thing? I I think I absolutely would. I mean, I love that plum crazy color. It's awesome. I hate it when they got rid of it. I think my daughter would love it. I think my wife would love it. I think it would just stand out at car shows. It's going to be an absolutely gorgeous car. It looks like the badging's different. This thing looks spectacular. Is it going to be marked up through the ceiling and to the moon? Uh, uh No, it's not going to be. It's not going to be marked up to the moon. It's going to be marked up to friggin' Pluto because the shakedown was beautiful and it was nice, but it was basically a black car with some stickers on it or Destroyer Gray in the narrow body. Um, this one takes it to a new level with the older colors and brings back that plum crazy and that B5 blue. And I think that's going to seriously ratchet up the desirability of both of those cars, those two colors, and the badging and just the overall look. Even the stickers look really cool, but in the end, just know everybody, it is a scat pack. Now I'm still foggy on whether we're gonna be able to order a new scat pack in Plum Crazy or B5, B5 Blue. I, I believe we're gonna be able to do that, but until orders open, I'm still confused based on when he said, we're launching the new, we're gonna release the new colors back 
and then they came out with the seven special models and a lot of people seem to have translated that into we're not going to be able to order the new colors um, it's going to be on the cars that get delivered to the dealerships i believe you're going to be able to order the new colors hopefully if i'm wrong you will most certainly correct me in the comments below so let me know but if that's the case then you can just order a scat pack in plum crazy and find a dealer that won't mark it up on you and I think you're in the same place. Uh, no question, the Super B with the stickers and everything else is going to be really cool. But the markups, assuming they're going to be ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, maybe fifty thousand dollars, because they're only going to make five hundred in the narrow body B5 blue and five hundred in Plum Crazy in the wide body. So that's going to limit the supply, which is going to drive the demand up. As we all know, we keep talking about in the previous videos. So let's talk about the specs on these cars. So according to PR Newswire, in addition to the plus group and carbon suede package content, the 2023 Dodge Charger Super B Special Edition model showcases a swarm of unique features, including Super B exterior badging on the grill and front fenders, which I think definitely look pretty cool, Super B exterior graphics on the functional hood scoop and rear fenders, blue graphics with B5 blue, white graphics with Plum Crazy, 20 by nine and a half inch, Knurled wheels with 275 drag radials on the scat pack. 18 by 11 inch drag wheels with 315 drag radials on the wide body. Adaptive dampening suspension with drag mode. Black Mopar hood pin kit. SRT hood with functional scoop and dual heat extractors. SRT black exhaust tips. Red four piston Brembo brake system. Super B interior instrument panel. Super B seat back logos. So it sounds like a dressed up scat pack but one that will be gorgeous, beautiful, and marked up to Pluto, as we all know. So now, let's talk about the markups. And let's talk about Racer X real quick. So some of you have been hard on Racer X. I love this guy. I've been watching him a long time. And some of you are saying that he's a shill for Dodge. And some, a couple of you said you unsubscribed from him because he's been positive about the Dodge changes and the direction they've been going. And I will only say to you that, you know, look, if you were a subscriber for the last, you know, three years, right, and you loved every one of his videos, and you were a fan, you loved his content, and frankly, a dude works really hard to get where he's at, and then he does a few videos where he's positive, where you don't agree with him, and you disengage, unsubscribe, and run for the hills, I will tell you, he ain't missing you. And if somebody does that to me, I ain't missing you either. That is a fair weather friend, man. If you can't go through a disagreement here and there and still stay engaged with one of your favorite creators, you were never a fan or a follower to begin with. That is ridiculous, it's unfair. Do I agree with what he's saying and the positive things he's saying? No, man, but I love the guy. And we had a great like hour and a half conversation the other night where we, you know, some debating over some of this stuff and, and some rational conversation where he helped me come a little bit to his direction and, and I pulled him a little bit to my direction. And in the end, we're car guys. So give the dude a break because he is going out of his way to try and at least affect some change when it comes to these markups. And I appreciate him for doing this. I don't know what it'll accomplish, and I hope it will accomplish something, but he started a petition on change.org to stop the markups, because the markups are insane. Now, will that stop the markups? Will the dealers just give us the finger once they see this thing and say, we don't care if you've got 27 million people signing this petition, will you stop doing the markups? Listen, what I believe is anything and everything we do right now to get the word out that we are sick and tired of the markups is a positive thing, it's a good thing, and it's something we all should jump on board with. So I'm gonna put the link in the description below to the change.org petition that he created, and go in there and just sign the petition, and then share it out. And let's see how big it gets. Maybe if it gets big enough, some of these dealers will start to listen. Also, what I would encourage you all to do is put them on blast. When dealers are charging just extraordinary markups as we see this next year progress, Put them on Instagram, put them on Facebook, put them on blast, get them out there because I saw recently the one Mac, I think it was Mac Hake um, dealership, Chevy dealership, where they had the $90,000 markup on their Z06 Corvette, $6,000 non-refundable deposit, and they came out and said, okay, we screwed up, we're not going to do that anymore, we're going to sell these things at MSRP. They made that decision, and that was because the heat that they took on social media from somebody releasing 
that order sheet that they signed. Look, I believe our voice is more powerful than we think it is sometimes. And as creators, we we have the opportunity to reach a bunch of you and then rally you towards a cause. And I think right now, protesting and throwing a fit and trying to push Dodge execs to put some pressure on these dealers by, by throttling allocations and other strategies and tactics that they actually can do could help us maybe get our hands on some of these amazing cars like this the Super B in Plum Crazy, which I would totally buy one of those. And if I pull into a dealership and one's sitting there at MSRP, and maybe it's a little bit more than a scat pack, that's cool. I, I will definitely buy one. I will I will stop and I will make the deal right then and there. But if it's marked up for a dollar, I refuse to do it. I will go without that car. So now I wanted to share with you, just in the continuing saga of the electric car argument, a comment that I got from a viewer who believed that we are going to go to some kind of ride sharing system in America in all the major cities and we're not even gonna need cars. And that I, I think is hilarious. And I just wanna make sure that I keep driving some of these points home to all of you so you can have the talking points if you agree with them to go share with people when you're in these conversations. So let me go ahead and read the comment he made and my response. And then I'll end this video and let you all go and, and hopefully propagate this information, sign the petition about the markups, and get your order in as soon as they open orders on anything except for one of the seven unique special cars, but get your order in so you can get your awesome Hemi motored car before it all goes away. All right, so here's, here's his comment. I'm not that worried about the electric grid. However, I don't think EVs will ever be cheap enough for most people to afford them. Many automakers don't make money on small sedans or compact cars. I think we're gonna see a shift to multi-use transport in major cities. This will mean that the average person will not need to own a car. That's one argument. Actually, it's one I haven't even heard yet. So I went ahead and responded, and I'm gonna share that response with you all so that you can maybe agree or disagree and if you agree, share these points because I think it's absurd. All right, I wrote, interesting thoughts. Sadly, I can't even wash my clothes and run my AC in the summer without rolling blackouts. So I'm not confident in the grid or that the significant increase in electricity use with EVs won't just force the use of more fossil fuels to generate the electricity needed, which puts us right back in the same place. As far as major cities, you do realize that major cities over 1 million in population are only 10 in the U.S. The 60% are in California and Texas. So what about the vast majority of the country that is suburban and rural? That theory sadly doesn't work. Proof is that when I was in rural Illinois, getting an Uber or Lyft was virtually impossible. So you either have to have a car or you don't go anywhere. Additionally, these major cities are too expensive for the average person to live and it's not getting any cheaper so they live in, in the suburbs, forcing them to own a car. Next, a 2022 Toyota Corolla base model is $20,000 and gets 453 miles of range on one $50 fill-up of the 13.2 gallon tank of gas. But the cheapest EV on the market right now is the Nissan Leaf and only gets 149 miles of range and is $28,000. $8,000 more and it takes 40 minutes at a DC charging station to charge to 80%, not even 100%, and it costs $16 to charge it for that one session. So to get the, get the same 453 miles in range, it would take three charges and cost $48 and two hours sitting at a charging station. With over 10 years making EVs at a high level, they still haven't gotten the prices down or the range high enough on cheap cars for the average person. I'm still waiting for a good today argument versus the future it'll all work out argument and I haven't gotten one yet. Is that crazy? When I did the, the numbers on a car for the, the cheapest cars out there, a Toyota Corolla base and a base Leaf, it's going to cost them almost the same to get the same amount of range yet we're driving this thing down everybody's throat and electricity will only get more expensive over time and the more people use it. That's just basic economics. I think we figured that out. So with that, everybody, hope you're enjoying these videos. Hope you're enjoying my absolute just raw logic and explanation of things. Please like, comment, subscribe, and let me double down on this. Please go up and like. When I see five, six, seven thousand views and I've got six, seven hundred likes, 
I'm very grateful. But man, if every one of you who watched this that liked this video and went back and hit that like button, these videos would go further to a bigger audience and help drive our, our mission forward of keeping these amazing cars and, and even showing that we have a large group of people that don't want an electric muscle car. We want something that makes amazing natural sounds from its motor. So hit that like button, share this video, subscribe, comment, be respectful, stay motivated, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.